Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great time at the Open Source Summit. My name is Kunal and today I'm going to be sharing about how you can scale your communities to be more inclusive. So a little bit more about me. I'm a senior right now. I'm going to be graduating next year. And I've been involved in open source ever since I was in my freshman year. I started you know, contributing to uh, a Kubernetes uh, Java client. That's when I realized that uh, open source, at least you know, for me as a student, is a great way to get involved in the community, get some real world experience, enhance my skills, and get so many opportunities, meet people from around the world, and also help others get uh, started with it. So ever since then, I've been involved in like many mentorship programs, I've been helping many many other you know folks get involved in uh, cloud native projects, getting more young folks involved in the cloud native projects. Currently, I'm working as a developer advocate at SIBO and uh, uh, do some uh, nice community work. And I also love teaching. And I uh, uh, also started the official uh, CNC of student community, where we conduct a lot of nice workshops and sessions. So that's uh, pretty much about me. If you want to connect with me, you can connect with me on Twitter. So before we dive into like, uh, how can we scale our you know communities to be more uh, more inclusive? We first have to say define a community. So community may mean different things to you know different people. Uh, for some, it might be like your own open source project. For some, it might be your uh, study group, for example. Or you know, for some, it might be like uh, you know five to six people uh, working together, studying and you know solving a problem or whatever. So. So what is what is a community? So according to me, community is a, a group of people, you know, that are sharing a, a goal and that you know that brings them together. And another way to look at this is, which is my next slide, which is uh, what are your community's shared struggles? So when you talk about forming communities, most of the time that I've seen, what brings the communities together is identifying what are the shared struggles. So, for example, when I was in my freshman year, we had a few, you know, a group of people who had a shared struggle of finding it difficult to contribute to open source. They had all of these people, you know, I think like 100 and 150 people. They had like, a, they, they were asking similar questions like, hey, um, how do you get started with such a big project? Or uh, the, the code base is really overwhelming. Where do we start? Where do we actually find projects to contribute to? So identifying what are the shared struggles of your community is extremely important. That sort of like defines your community. The next thing you have to talk about when you're asked to question, hey, what does your community mean? Which is, what is the mission of your community? Now, the mission of your community can change, you know, over that, the time over the course of few years, but you should always remember what you, you know, set out to be, what your uh, initial goal was, and what is like your who is like your target audience, what you're trying to achieve, what are your uh, values that you should definitely you know uh, that the com community has been built upon. Okay, and from that you can uh, have a particular mission like okay, I want to get so many people get started with open source. I want uh, I want more folks from this region involved in our projects or in our events. I want to have like a global community or I want to have like a localized chapter. So what is your mission? So once your mission is achieved, then you, know, you will have new missions. So the missions may change, but your original idea should be the same. Now, the next thing uh, you have to ask yourself is, uh, what do members look to get out of your community? Why would anyone want to join? Right? What do you have to offer? And speaking of uh, how people can join, we also have to talk about effective communication because this is very, very crucial when we are talking about diversity and inclusion because you may not know how many people or people from which background, from which domain, who might be, you know, underrepresented in tech, they may feel that it's difficult to get involved in the community. They may feel like, you know, uh, that I might not have many things to offer. What am I going to do? It's really overwhelming. How do I start? Whom do I reach out to? So what do members, uh, you know, look to get out of your community? Is there is there a particular skill they want to learn? Is there a particular event they want to attend? Is there a particular, you know, meetup they want to speak at, for example? Or uh, are they interested in, like, networking? Are they interested in contributing? If it's an open source project, do you want to contribute in the code way? Do you want to contribute in a non-code way, in, like documentation and stuff? Do you want to help in the marketing aspect or whatever? Okay, so you have to figure out what your members are trying to get out of your community, what you have to offer, and you know best, right, what you have to offer. And effective communication basically means that having a streamlined way, uh, like an effective way 
where people can reach out basically and ask questions a few examples i can give for this is having like a public channel you can have the mailing lists or uh, for instant communication you can have something like you know discord or slack or whatever and uh, one more thing that i would like to mention is if we're talking about making it more inclusive to people uh, like for example making it more inclusive and easier for people to reach out i think like regular meetings can really help especially if you're an open source project and actively looking for contributors weekly meetings monthly meetings office hours if you will so that can really help drive new folks in keep it like uh, open ended and where everyone can you know uh, join and anyone can join and when we share their views start contributing um ask questions ask doubts even answer questions give their own you know feedback and make sure the feedback is heard because that is also important because uh, people hailing from you know different cultural backgrounds and uh, it's an instrumental it's a necessity for the instrumental the growth of the it sector you know uh, that uh, people from various backgrounds are putting forward their views it's definitely also going to help the community grow as well so effective communication very important one more important point that comes over here is a code of conduct which we'll talk more about later on now making your community future proof is also very important because uh, you know the only one who's going to be running the community forever um you might have other engagements as well so it, it's very important to make your community future proof one way i do it is um identifying uh, current uh, community members who might be interested and in what their strengths are and forming teams into you know various aspects of the community that you know all the various teams that are required to run a community so like socials and uh, technical and marketing and content for example and proofreading or whatever right uh, contributor experience for example so making community future proof is selecting thought leaders like from these uh, you know, active community leaders and uh, uh, people who might who might be interested into you know taking forward the leap and uh, who might be interested in taking charge and who might be you know interested in uh, uh, who might be having great ideas for example so what i can remember is uh, really someone was contributing to our community and uh, they made our discord server very nicely um, we were able to scale it from uh, zero till uh, around 25000 users in just under a month and people were asking doubts actively over there there was like a proper code of conduct and rules and regulations and different channels for different things making sure there was no spam now they're leading our entire discord and the open source program management and everything they are doing so how did i figure out that they wanted to because they showed interest right they came and they showed interest and they wanted to do it i'm like okay sure you are already doing great work go ahead so i'm not saying like directly like do it today <laughs> uh, but uh, make sure you making your community future proof so importance of diversity and inclusion this is a very important point because people you know like as i mentioned who are hailing from different parts of the world it's important for them to showcase their uh, views and knowledge as well uh, first first thing like why it's important because you as a community are providing them and them a platform so if you are not going to do it who is going to do it if the communities are not going to do it then then who is going to do it right there might be many many other people because uh the community aspect even of various companies many many other companies you know big tech tech giants they also have a community aspect they are also running diversity and inclusion programs why are they doing it because it's important it's important to uh recognize people on the basis of you know the efforts they are putting in and if they want to get involved their enthusiasm their uh, you know interest and as a community leader point of view it's definitely helping your community grow as well right because if i'm talking about kubernetes for example so kubernetes has uh, the kubernetes community days groups all around the world new delhi you know in india various parts of india north america south america um, you know europe and uh, africa for example so it's helping the community scale as well how is it helping it because more and more people are conducting their localized events more and more people are contributing to the open source projects more and more people are sharing their views it's like a two way communication sort of a thing it's helping the community as well community grow you're reaching the worldwide audience and helping as many people as you can and it's also helping the people get involved so it's very important and when we're talking about the importance of diversity and inclusion one of the most important point you have to uh, look into is who might be excluded from accessing the activities of your community so now this the, these barriers can be a lot uh, for example language barriers someone who might not be able to understand the documentation in your language or whatever so 
that might be a barrier some uh, some other barriers might be your uh, community is not having effective communication okay uh, other barriers might be uh, geographical regions some other might be some people might be facing imposter syndrome like the community is let's say not beginner friendly so you know that uh, you know, good first issues exist for a reason even if you're talking about some of the biggest projects in the world some of the most complex projects in the world they also have beginner friendly issues and uh, Kubernetes, I believe, is like the second biggest projects in the world. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. And uh, it also has beginner friendly issues. I, as a student, so many students who are contributing in a non code way, even in code way. Uh, so there are like so many LFX mentorship programs and everything in which they are participating. So you have to figure out who might be excluded from accessing the activities of your community. It also depends on what kind of activities you're running. If you're running a hackathon, if you're running an event, if you're running a webinar. Right. So if you're, let's say you're running a webinar in a local language, so people from around the world who might not be able to attend due to um, language restrictions or uh, travel restrictions or so on and so forth. So a great example for this can be the Open Source Summit. Many people who might not be able to attend for, let's say, the financial region. So Open Source Summit, uh, you know, they provide diversity and need-based scholarships. So that's diversity and inclusion in action. So shout out to them. All right. One more thing, uh, you know, that is very important when you talk about diversity, inclusion, and stuff, uh, which is handling negative scenarios. If you're at an event or if you're at a, you know, workshop, you're conducting something, or if you're conducting a hackathon, there might be some negative scenarios. It really happens, but it, you know, sometimes does happen. The the best way to deal with the uh, these scenarios or conflicts, if you will, is uh, make sure that both the parties are feeling safe. That's the most important point. Uh, one of the ways you can do this is make sure you, you know, take them to a different area or whatever, away from like the event, and then you ask them, uh, make sure you hear both the sides. And uh, if the, if there's a, if this has been like a, you know, violation of code of conduct, make, you, make sure you take strict actions and uh, make sure that these things don't get repeated again and again. So various scenarios uh, are dealt with, you know, differently. And uh, it totally depends on like the severity, but it's important to hear the both the sides, and it's also important to take uh, firm actions as well. Depending upon what the violation was, we'll talk more about code of conduct in the end. Now, this is another important point when we're talking about diversity and inclusion and scaling communities. Uh, this is one of the key points when we're talking about diversity and inclusion. Designing your community's needs. What do the community members need? Now, there are two types of uh, needs. Needs that are facilitated, needs that are not facilitated. So in in-person events, for example, they ask us, hey, would you like vegan food? Would you like you know, non-veg food? Would you like vegetarian food? Do you have any allergies or something, right? So that's needs that are facilitated. It is including diversity and inclusion, okay? In the badges, we can see that, hey, uh, you can talk to me or you can you know, maintain a social distance or I'm uh, not able to talk to anyone right now, there are different color of badges. So, uh, another things can be uh, needs that are facilitated like, hey, uh, is the venue of your event uh, wheelchair accessible? Do you have uh, nutritional or do you have like ingredient values written on the food items, for example? Uh, do you have proper sanitation and everything for speakers or, or so on and so forth? And so these are needs that are facilitated. This is something you can grow, you can learn from other events. You can gradually learn from your past events as well. What needs were facilitated, what people required. And one more way by, by which you can do this is actually sending out surveys to attendees, right? So what could have been improved, uh, what you liked, what you loathed, what you learned, and what you could uh, improve, right? Cool. The next one is needs that are not facilitated. It might be possible that at your event, sometimes, uh, there might be uh, some needs that you were not able to facilitate. Uh, so for example, you can say something like, hey, really sorry that we did not have like uh, dairy free products or um, really sorry, we don't have a feeding room, for example, right? So such needs that are, that might not be, or let's say my the event is not wheelchair accessible, for example. So these are important needs, but let's say these were, let's say for some reason, it was not facilitated at your event. For, for new event organizers, this sometimes does happen. The best way to deal with this is uh, be honest and uh, be direct. So don't like beat around the bush. Just be honest like, hey, uh, you know, we, we really missed out on this and I really apologize and we'll try to, you know, uh, do our best in like the future events and we'll make sure this doesn't happen again. So try to see what you can do on spot for them, right? That's all like uh, more like an ad hoc thing for depending on the situation. But make sure you are honest. Make sure you are direct like, hey, 
really apologize and uh, we'll make sure that uh, you know, take a take a note of this for the future events okay so that are needs that are not facilitated code of conduct i'm sure everyone is you know aware of uh, what code of conducts are we have like in so many other communities and big open source projects so uh, basically this is sort of like a set of rules and regulations for the community like be polite no spamming no promotions or whatever and no you know uh, no bad talks just basically uh, be a good person right so these are like the general stuff and it also applies to us as like human beings uh, like be be a good human being and uh, uh, always be kind and don't make uh, uh, bad comments on basis of anyone's you know uh, like race or gender or uh, don't discriminate on the basis of these things right so these are like basic human uh, ethics that we should follow on top of it uh, a community may have their own set of rules and regulations so this totally depends on you know like your community and uh, what sort of rules and regulations do you have obviously the basic human you know uh, nature the good nature that everyone should follow that should be there but uh, on top of that you can have your own one more thing that i would like to mention over here many people forget to add is uh, make sure you add a point of contact for uh, emergencies right so if uh, someone wants to report a violation of a code of conduct they should be able to reach out to a particular person you can either uh, list an email or a phone number this is very very crucial when you're at an event right so having a point of contact where people can reach out to report a violation of the code of conduct it's very important cool so i hope that gave you a little bit of idea about uh, you know how you design your community what do you mean by a community how you've you know figured out what your community is needs and uh, all the things and the points that i mentioned in the slides you can you know uh, think about those and uh, try to think about in the perspective of your own community and how you can use those points and figure out the strengths and weaknesses and how uh, people might not be able to you know let's say access or what they might be excluded from accessing uh, in your community and then you can act upon it and uh, Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I'll be more than happy to help. And uh, yeah, hope you have a great event. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Take care.